Greetings, this is Sean Bagshaw from Outdoor Exposure Photography and Photo Cascadia. In this short video tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate two great advances in the April 21st release of Lightroom Creative Cloud 2015. And those are Merge to HDR and Merge to Panorama. Lightroom has gone through substantial improvements over the years to give photographers more control over the developing of their images. However, up until now, techniques involving the merging of more than one exposure or frame had to be done in Photoshop or third-party software. Now you can merge multiple exposures to create high dynamic range images all within Lightroom, and you can also merge frames to create both vertical and horizontal panoramas. I'm recording on the day of release, so I haven't had time to test these features extensively yet, but on first impression they seem like great additions to Lightroom. Let's start with the merge to HDR. This is similar to the 32-bit high dynamic range file processing capability that was first made available in Lightroom 4 and which I demonstrated in a previous video blog and also include in my Developing for Extended Dynamic Range video series. The process is now simplified and no longer requires Photoshop. If you've made adjustments to tone or presence before merging to HDR, those adjustments will be ignored but you can convert to black and white, make changes to image detail like sharpening and noise, and also lens corrections before merging to HDR if you want. But because everything stays in Lightroom, you can also make those adjustments after you've done the merging. Start by selecting the range of images that you want to merge, and then right-clicking and going to Photo Merge HDR. This window opens up and begins the merging. Once the image opens in the HDR Merge Preview window, you have just a few options. You can check the Auto Align box if you want to align the exposures. This is handy if you think your tripod moved or if you took your exposures handheld. Autotone allows you to have Lightroom suggest some toning. I think I'll probably leave that for myself to do back in the Develop module. If objects move in your image, you can select a deghosting amount, either low, medium, or high. In this case, I have clouds and waves that were moving, so even a low deghosting amount shows a fair amount of area that's being deghosted. This checkbox allows you to turn those highlights on and off. And if you feel like you have more ghosting, you can try a higher setting. Most of the controls you have over the HDR image will happen back in the develop module. So at this point, I'm just going to say merge and have it merge my HDR. And while it's merging, I can, if I wanted to, select another set of exposures and begin merging those. But I don't need to do the second one now. I just wanted to show you that you could. When the merge is complete, you'll find that you have a new file that is the high dynamic range file, which is in the DNG raw file format. This HDR DNG file has more dynamic range than any of the individual raw exposures. You can see in the slider for the exposure here that we can go from negative 10 all the way up to plus 10 stops for a total of 20 stops of dynamic range. A regular RAW file has an exposure range of only negative 5 to plus 5 for 10 stops of dynamic range. So with all of that dynamic range from the four exposures merged into one, we have a lot more latitude for how we make adjustments to this image. So I can really open up my shadows a great deal and recover my highlights and work with the whites and blacks a little bit of contrast and some clarity and some vibrance and really end up with a wonderful blended high dynamic range image and I still have all of the adjustments that I could normally make in Lightroom such as working with white balance and also working with hue saturation and luminance for example, if I wanted to further darken the blues in the sky and maybe bring down some of the magentas and reds and oranges in the sky. 
And I can also work with my lens corrections, for example, to remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections to straighten out that horizon. And also if I want to do some rotating and cropping, for example, to level my ocean horizon. And I could continue making Lightroom adjustments here in Lightroom. Or I could take this image over to Photoshop and do further adjustments in Photoshop. This technique still doesn't offer as much blending control as hand blending exposures in Photoshop does. And I also don't think it can handle quite the degree of dynamic range that that technique can. But this is a great option that can give very excellent results in many cases. And it's certainly much simpler and quicker than manually blending exposures. Now let's look at the new Merge to Panorama feature. Just like with the Merge to HDR, select the series of images that you want to stitch together. And again, it's better to leave most of your Lightroom adjustments until after the image has been stitched or merged to the panorama. You can do some adjustments before the merge, but many adjustments in Lightroom will not be recognized during the merge and will be ignored. And all of the Lightroom adjustments are available once the merge has been completed. So once you've selected the series, right click and go to Photo Merge Panorama. As with Merge to HDR, Merge to Panorama has very basic controls. You have three different projection options, spherical, cylindrical, and perspective. Perspective starts with the middle frame and then works out from there. And this can result in a lot of distortion on the outer edges of your panorama, especially in very long panoramas. But in panoramas that aren't as wide, or in panoramas where you've done a lot of overlap from one image to the next, perspective can work well. I almost always use cylindrical. Spherical can work really well if you're trying to do 360 degree panoramic animations. For example, like for architectural interiors. And you can also just have Lightroom auto select the projection. And then auto crop will automatically crop off the white edges around the outside of the stitched panorama. Once you've completed that, you can say merge. and the emerged panorama will appear back in your Lightroom catalog. Now you can make all of your normal Lightroom adjustments directly to this merged image file, which is also a DNG RAW file with the suffix pano. So for example, if I want to bring down highlights and maybe bring down my exposure and bring up my shadows and clarity and contrast. I could also work with white balance and lens corrections. For example, if I want to work with my vertical alignment a little bit. And then when I did that, I brought out some more of those white edges. So I would check constrain crop here to make sure that the crop was all the way complete. And I could continue working on this image here in Lightroom, or I could edit it in Photoshop and finish up my developing there. So these are two great new features in Lightroom Creative Cloud 2015. I think a lot of Lightroom users who do not use Photoshop are really going to appreciate this new functionality. And I also think a lot of people who have done some of these tasks in Photoshop before will find that being able to do them in Lightroom will give them an extra layer of added efficiency and convenience. I hope that information is helpful for you and I hope you can put it right to use in your Lightroom workflow.